This is the ultimate hacking keyboard. I waited nearly 14 months to get my hands on one with all the accessories. In a matter of a week, I decided that not only is this the best 60% keyboard I've ever used, it's the best split keyboard and it's the easiest to use. However, it's not perfect. So today I'm going to go over why I still think that you should be looking at the UHK V2. Ultimate Gadget Laboratories, the company that makes the UHK, is a small company in Hungary that is obsessed with making this Ultimate keyboard. Over the past several years, they have iteratively designed and tweaked their design to get to where they are today. On the blog section of their website, the creator Laszlo provides monthly posts with updates as well as answers questions and has conversations with the community. His receptiveness and impartiality in pursuit of perfection has led the company to make a keyboard that is equipped with many features and is durable, but most importantly is open source and repairable. The UHK V2 has backlighting, hot swap sockets, several color options, feet for tinting, mouse and scroll functions, a sturdy case with no visible branding, and a detachable braided USB cable. First, let's talk about pricing. This keyboard changes in price from time to time. And right now, as I'm making this video, it costs 320 US dollars and includes your choice of eight different switches, whether you want ANSI or a pseudo ISO layout and five different case colors. However, this doesn't come with the almost mandatory $75 palm rest or the $65 modules that extend the functionality. There are key cluster, touch point, trackball, and trackpad modules. For relatively small fees, you can pick up replacement parts like spare cases or cables, but more importantly, stuff like the steel guides, screws, rubber feet, and even the magnets can also be separately ordered. Keep in mind that there is an international shipping fee, so buying this keyboard piece by piece might not be a good way to go. Second, let's talk about usability. I spend my workday coding and my spare time editing and playing games. If you're like me in any way, the specific tools that you use every day are extremely important for efficiency, comfort, and aesthetics. I have been very hesitant to get such a small keyboard in what's called the 60% layout because it can be less efficient to hit two keys instead of using just one. I've also been very hesitant to get a split keyboard because they end up with funky layouts or compromise on features like backlighting, hot swap, and etc. So what made me crazy enough to get this expensive split 60%? Not only does this keyboard have a mostly standard layout and can convert from a split layout to joined, it also has several modules that add more keys or mouse functions. The overall quality of the keyboard is outstanding, especially how sturdy it feels joined or split, despite its extremely small and thin form factor. There are several small attentions to detail, like the fact that you don't have to have the springy cable in the joined form. The cutouts on the wrist rest allow for your thumb to easily hit the module keys without interference. There are multiple types of trackballs and keycaps for your cluster module. And the USB cable has an adapter to convert from USB-C to USB-A. However, within the first couple hours of use, the sturdy USB cable snapped the plastic connector on my case. The legs are toolless, which is nice, but I almost broke one of mine because the tolerance wasn't just right. Thankfully, the high strength from the assumingly high carbon content in the plastic kept it from snapping. It is a little bit deformed, but thankfully I can get a new case and legs. My only question is why wasn't the USB-C port flush with the case like 99% of other boards? I thought that typing on a split keyboard after typing on a standard layout for so long would be hard to adapt to, but it is actually the opposite for me. The only key that I have issues with is the B button because I alternate which hand hits that key. Surprisingly, the track point module with the little red pressure sensitive circle was my favorite mouse module. 
In the middle of coding, I found that transitioning to using the little nub is seamless and less work compared to the trackball touchpad or using a regular mouse. Because I use an ultra wide monitor and two 19 by 10 monitors on top, it leads to a large expanse to cover effectively. I thought that the touchpad would be perfect for me, but it is too thin left to write with my current setup. If I was on a single screen, it might be more warranted. The ergonomics, namely being able to angle the halves and straighten my wrists, not only has helped me with strain on my hands and, and wrists, but also on my elbows and shoulders. Coming from the realm of custom keyboards, I was concerned with how it would feel and sound. So I did the safest thing that I could, and I got some silent switches, which turned out to be quieter than my desk mat. However, I regret this now as I didn't realize that they were kale box switches and are generally not a good switch to lubricate. Not just because of the switch anatomy, but also because they can end up squeaking from the little rubber bits. The box browns are slightly scratchier than the reds, which I should have expected, so the linear reds might be better if you do want to get the box switches. I left the original keycaps on the switches to get familiar to the different layers and functions which is extremely well thought out, intuitive, and easy to adapt to. The only keys that I had to change was the tilde key to always be escape, and the spacebar and mod to be consistent on both halves. But with that, let's talk about the aesthetics. In the board stock form, it does fit its namesake with layers and layers of functions and legends. I gladly bought the red version of the case and am very happy with the overall design, color, and footprint. Images and videos don't really showcase how small this board actually is, as I thought it would be a little bit larger. It would be nice to see different options for the case or plate, like brass or nickel plating. The double shot PBT keycaps are well made, have a rough surface, and backlit legends. The font is nice and uniform and sculpted to match the intended finger. The stabilizers did rattle, but they were serviceable. I took off all the keycaps and switches and easily figured out how to dismantle the case. There are two screws on the bottom of the board that hold the plastic top and bottom together with snap hooks and grooves around the edges. Be careful with the left half as the LED badge doesn't screw down and dangles. Using some packing foam from buying an extra case, I used the steel plate as a template to cut out a plate foam for both halves. I also placed a paper thin sheet of foam underneath each half of the PCB. I was sure to keep clear of the guide rods, connectors, and standoffs as achieving a fraction of dampening isn't worth damaging your board in any way. I took the time to lube and clip the stabilizers, which made the largest difference in how the board felt and sounded. Laszlo and his team, although small, far surpasses and outperforms companies 10 times its size. Many creators, like myself, strive to be informative, responsive, and efficient. Please help me to grow my channel by subscribing or supporting me. I would really like to continue making content, and it would be a dream to make this a part-time source of income for myself and my family. Even if you just commented or gave me a thumbs up, I would really appreciate your support. Take a listen to how much modding stabilizers helps, what it sounded like with the silent switches, and also what it sounds like with some new clickies switches from Zeal PC.
This board is nowhere near perfect, but ultimately this ultimate hacking keyboard lives up to its name. The open source nature, level of communication from developers, and repairability is comparable to none. Just for these reasons, I feel that it is well worth the price tag. I believe in supporting people who are transparent, honest, and do the right thing. When I know I'm going to spend a long time typing, I'll reach for this board and hit the ground running. I waited over a year for my board to reach me, and it was worth the wait. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.